What's up, sweaties? That's right, it's a special, very tasty Friday episode of Collider Heroes, episode 181. We'll just get used to our strange numbering, I'm trying to. Uh, you know, we're in New York Comic Con, a lot of weird episodes, things happen, a lot of fun activities happen, lots of news to cover today. Let me introduce my guest, starting with Amy Dallin. She is here today. Hello, good to be here. New York was amazing. Thank you to everyone who came and said hi. It was such a blast. Right, wasn't it? It was like so crowded. I think it gets more crowded. It feels like it was more crowded. And you know who else is here who was there as well? John Roca. What's up, man? Hello, everyone. Thanks for everybody coming up and say hi. And someone was getting me sick. So thank you so much. Concrud, I love no. it. Concrud, the nerd yeah. flu. Well, the concrud is almost unavoidable. Yes. Like a lot of people come up and want to shake your hand. I'm always doing the fist bump. And a lot of people know, oh, yeah, you don't shake hands. And it has nothing to do with not shaking hands. Right. It's more about like, look, I'm meeting like thousands of people. And so I'm just trying to keep the germs just to this knuckle region. Um, <laughs> But anyway, uh, you know what? Let's talk about some really cool stuff that just happened at midnight today, Friday the 13th. That's right, the new Mutants trailer dropped. Incredible. Uh, a lot of people were like unexpectedly surprised when it was announced yesterday. We we're going to drop the new Mutants. Josh Boone was like, um, it's coming out midnight. Uh, all of us were very pleasantly surprised. I could speak for myself as being very happy to see that they went the full horror route. We had been talking about this many months ago when they first announced these three movies for 2018, that basically Fox has this certain agenda that they're gonna follow through with and they're gonna make these films, since they saw Logan and Deadpool be so successful, they're like, let's make the rest of our run, try to turn turn it around a little bit. Frosty kind of like agreed earlier today, he was like, yeah, they definitely, they have this, this agenda with every film, they want it to be different. So with the new mutants, it just made sense because they were using the Chris Claremont, uh, Bill Sienkiewicz run, the Demon Bear story, and they were gonna go with a horror element. They were gonna go with a horror uh, thema theme, just like Deadpool's a comedy, breaking the fourth wall, just like X-Men Dark Phoenix, perhaps is gonna be a science fiction film, mm -hmm. it's gonna go into, we don't know how, what Dark Phoenix is gonna be yet, but uh, let's talk about reactions to New Mutants. Now, myself having read those comics and loving Chris Claremont's run, Bill Sienkiewicz, masterful run, uh, and you know, recently those have been pr uh, re reprinted. You can get the trade paperback and kind of see what came before like 30 years ago to where we are now. Let's start with you, Amy, and New Mutants. So this is maybe gonna be kind of a surprise. I didn't love the teaser, but I'm kind of okay with that mm -hmm. because this teaser was not for me. This was for everyone <laughs> in the world who isn't me. Yep. They have my money. They said New Mutants, they said Claremont and Sienkiewicz. I already know everything about those characters and I love them and I love the stories. And I'm watching this kind of being like, this doesn't have much to do with the X-Men, but that's the point I think of this, is they're trying to reach all the people out there who aren't me, who don't know who the New Mutants are, who don't know what this is, and they're trying to impress them with what you're saying, that like each film will have its own character. Uh, so they're, they're like leaning on, like there's nothing in that trailer that says this is the X-Men, except like, do you know what a mutant is? Uh, and so in that sense, like, I like I I mean I can't lie when we got the glimpse of Maisie Williams with her red hair like my heart started beating twice as fast there's still that like it's <laughs> still a new mutants trailer right. I'm really excited for it but it is an interesting sort of like discussing the marketing strategy there I hope that it is a huge success and gets the attention of everyone they're looking for, but I'm excited for when the like X-Men part starts showing up. I'm really glad you brought that up because I thought, you know, just earlier previous, me and Roka were on Movie Talk, we discussed a little bit about this, like the marketing technique, I think it's exactly what you said. I'm glad you said that. It's not for the dyed in the wool New Mutants fans. This is to open it up to the rest of the people who might not even know that the New Mutants take place in an X-Men world. And they're not gonna know that from this trailer. But I think the second trailer, and then the third and final trailer before this film comes out, will showcase not only the more magical and super heroic elements, but in a more darker and horror style vein, I think it's it's just opening this world up in a different avenue. What do you think, mm -hmm. Rogan? Yeah, I love the trailer, and but it may just be because I know, like you, Amy, I know the story and I've read it, John, like we talked about, we, I've read, so for me, I put things into the trailer that maybe if I hadn't read it, I would have been like, this is the haunting too or yeah. something, or, yeah. you know, this is something like that. And so I can see what they're doing, but I applaud what Fox is doing. Fox was taking so much crap for the mistakes that they made with the superhero properties right. and the occasional hits with many more misses. So starting with Deadpool, they thought they'd take some more chances. Logan, this now, so to me, this, I like this. I like this idea. I enjoy 
enjoy that they're pushing the boundaries of what the superhero film can be. And starting out like this, it lets you know, especially from the opening line, that whole idea of the young rattlesnake. I said it on Movie Talk. This idea that they, they don't know how to use their powers, so they use too much of it. I mean, that scene with the fire, with the hand coming, like, what is that? You know, there's so much. So we're going to see them kind of understand how they use their powers, how they can hurt, how they can affect people. I love the opening cemetery shot. Is that an X-Men Days of Future Past shot? From what we from the comics, we see them walk all the gravestones and the headstones that have the names of the X-Men that were killed. So there's so much here from the comics that was already in that I enjoyed. And Anya Taylor, I love that she's in this Maisie mm -hmm. Williams. They all look fantastic. The cast they, looks fantastic. They really do. And Alice Braga is a great choice to bring this to life. And we see some of the obviously the, the smiley mask that freaked me out, right? You would see that in <laughs> other horror films. You'd be like, oh, what is this? this is a new killer? But no, this is like related to they, they, they work with Stryker and the Purifier. So what does that mean? So there's is that the right? Is that a guy from the right? And so there's so much here that was in this that I was just like, I am super excited and I can't wait to see what the second one is. And I'm glad they didn't show the powers because mm -hmm. that gives us something to look forward to in the second trailer. Yeah. Most yeah. definitely. And I, you know, we joked a little bit about where's the dragon Lockheed. I mean, yeah. I think, <laughs> I mean, I feel like because they're going in a horror, in the horror vein, I think we will see elements of that, yeah. but it'll be a lot darker. It'll be more mysterious and maybe even scary and not like super cuddly like, like Lockheed has been in the comic books. Mm -hmm. I want to see uh, Ilya Rasputin and uh, the armor right. slowly appear. I want right. to see that sword. I want to see all those elements. Look at Amy. She's getting like super amped up. She's, she's, she's getting, getting sweaty. Super geeked These are my people. And, no, and you're right. Like it, it does look good. I, I, I'm, I'm, I, I'm not bagging on it, and I'm, I'm so glad that, like, hopefully we'll get everyone really excited about these characters in this world, and that we'll get Limbo. And we know from things uh, Boone has said in interviews, like. I, uh, whatever is or it doesn't does or doesn't happen at the studio level, we know that he loves this stuff and yes. he is a deep sweaty. Yeah. So. <laughs> and and you know what makes me really happy is Bill was on set. He's doing artwork mm. for the movie. These like they're keeping a lot of the original core involved, and I think that's really important. I I, I you know I'm certainly hoping for a, an, an incredible Bill Sinkevich movie poster called the new mutants to be seen soon we don't know but uh let's uh let's keep our eyes posted for the next trailer all of us are all in on the new mutants so definitely check it out look at it with those eyes and uh, let's move on to the next sub subject which is thor ragnarok so thor ragnarok screened early for critics uh and a lot of people were really uh jazzed about the film which you know what is great to hear i mean uh, I didn't get a chance to see it. Roka, you haven't seen it. Amy, no. you haven't seen it. Oh, but none of us. None of us have seen it yet. A, a lot of these other people, I don't know who they are, Mark <laughs> Riley, uh, got to, uh, got a chance to see it, and they were like, I loved it. And I was like, I cannot wait to see it now. I mean, it's so good to hear good news about the film instead of like, not like, a, it was okay. I wish this part was better or this. So, I mean, like across the board, really fun. Everybody said they laughed, and that's kind of like, you know, I'm not worried about Thor being too funny. I really, I really am not. I, I'm looking forward to laughing a lot mm -hmm. in a Thor film because you never think that you'd say that. You know, the Thor of the Dark World couldn't stop laughing. Man, those elves. Okay. I, look, I'm very excited for Ragnarok, but I feel we're all going back and revising on those pre Those two previous movies are funny. They are. They're full oh, of funny moments. They have moments, yes. This one will probably blow them out of the water. Mm. But I just, like, before we all forget and act like it was a dour fest through those first two. <laughs> no, no, two, I'm not like, saying that. I'm definitely not saying it was <laughs> a dour fest. It had that little, <laughs> It had that little dog <laughs> at the end, remember? That's one of the post credit scenes. No, there was a lot of funny stuff. The yeah. interactions between Thor and his brother. There was, a, there was a ton of funny stuff. It just wasn't, like, cracking out loud, like, mm -hmm. I can't can't stop laughing kind of Thor the Dark World and Thor the original <laughs> definitely they have humor but it was more situational and yeah. I feel like I'm I'm pretty sure that Taika is gonna use situational humor too but then the ad-libbing elements are gonna bring that to the fore I think yeah. and that's what I'm hoping so I mean what are your thoughts about all the buzz that you're hearing about Thor oh. Ragnarok yeah, I couldn't be more excited. And I think he was on with Jimmy Kimmel the other night, and they played the scene with him. And that, oh, I can't remember the name of the creature that Taika Waititi is doing the voiceover for. We saw him in Hall H. We saw little clips. There's a further thing where he's having this weird interaction with him about his uh, uncomfortable connection to his hammer, <laughs> his intimate connection to his hammer. So there's right. that that they play with. So that's that was just a small snippet of what mm. the kind of humor we're going to see from the film. I'm excited about it. And I like this idea that Hulk is going to be part. You need someone who's going to go toe to toe with Thor, right? Some of the best part of the Avengers movies are they're, they're, they're back and forth with each yes. other and, and who's the stronger Avenger and we see that in one of the new clips
clips where he's like putting the hand and right. who's the strongest Avenger? The, oh, the strongest Hulk. Avenger. Yeah, the strongest yeah. the Hulk. You know, those kinds of things are great to see, and it's exciting to see them put that forward with this film. And I'm I think we needed those first two films so that we can have a jump off where we have oh, the yeah. humor and all this. Because you're right, Amy. There were funny moments in both those films with Hemsworth playing like his his fish out of water stuff when he's yeah. eating the coffee and he throws it on the ground. Like there's all that in the first movie, and in the second movie, there's all the interactions with uh, with uh, with the rest of his crew, with his boys, uh, with his uh, with uh, with Sif. The Warriors all, Three. The Warriors Three. Right? All of that is what brings the humor to the to the. So you're right. It wasn't it wasn't Nolan's Dark Knight. It was definitely <laughs> a lot more of a lighter Thor, but. People haven't always liked the first two installments, and right. this is getting universal praise. So I think it's just those of us who love the first two installments are going to be even more happy to see this. So I'm jammed out about Absurder. Yeah. I'm super excited about Hella. But you know what? Hella. I really I, I like oh. the comments that came out this week about the Hulk. Yeah. Now, a lot of us know that you know there's rights issues with Universal with having a standalone Hulk movie, and they weren't even sure they wanted to keep making Hulk standalone films. They feel like he works best as, he, as he's part of the story as opposed to the full story. And I feel like that's what a lot of the... The movies have kind of shown, and mm -hmm. and basically Kevin Feige and Mark Ruffalo said, "Look, we're going to look at Thor Ragnarok as the beginning of a three-part Hulk story to continue in Avengers three and four to culminate in Avengers four. So, if you are to go from that information and say, look, it's amazing how they kind of worked in uh, Planet Hulk into <laughs> Thor Ragnarok like mysteriously, and it's like all the elements of Plan Planet Hulk are actually in Thor Ragnarok, yeah. yet they also covered." The Surtur saga, I'm like, my mind is blown. How is this all in a 90-minute movie? <laughs> and it's also really funny. Hats off to you. I can't wait to see this. Um, but that makes me wonder, obviously, we have Infinity War. That's Avengers 3. Are we moving into World War Hulk for Avengers 4? What do you think, Amy? Ooh. <laughs> because we've spent a lot of time talking about what happens after Infinity War. Yes. And uh, it would be like a... a sort of depressing place to take it but it would be there's some potential there uh it is interesting that they're that they, they don't mind laying out that it will have this track um sort of saying like you should probably see this if you're following his thing i guess he lives through infinity war right um because he's got a third part of his story yep. we're gonna see in number four yeah. uh but <coughs> i it will like it's an interesting approach to take it really plays to the fact that like they're trying to take advantage of the thing that they do right now which is the interlaced continuity mm -hmm. like i know some folks are are burning out on that because it feels like you have to see everything but as long as they're doing it they're like here are the things we can only do because we have this model right. uh, so i'm really excited to see how that yeah. plays out i hope f hope they call avengers 4 infinity gauntlet mm. I, that's what i want i want Inven infinity war and then infinity gauntlet because running the gauntlet is also a terminology where it's like it could be a cool thing that if thanos wins right in infinity war and it ends with that ping it, it ends with that little like what's you know he finally meets up with hella and you know, we, I don't know what's going to happen, but mm -hmm. something has to happen in Avengers 3 to force us into Avengers 4 because they're like, the everything is going to culminate in Avengers 4, and the, supposedly that is the end of Phase 3. Mm -hmm. And it could be the end of the Marvel Cinematic Universe as we know it. So, I mean, those are big things. That's a lot of big stuff, and those are big issues. Having Thor, or even World War Thor, I mean, World War Hulk, sorry, Hulk be part of that, not all of it, like, not, it wouldn't be Avengers, World War Hulk. It would be Infinity Gauntlet, but that's just one of the larger stories. What yeah. do you think? Yeah, I, th I secretly believe that they've wanted to do a Hulk standalone movie to make up for those first two. They didn't quite hit the nail on the head, and they have progressed his storyline through all. This isn't just, hey, a three-movie arc with him. No, like the stuff with Black Widow, the stuff with them, fi like fi him being found by Black Widow, and the first of it, all of that is to lay the groundwork of this character through the films. It's kind of like their, their loophole right. because of the rights issues with Universal, so they are kind of moving around those by putting his story elements into these films, so I think it's smart, and it gets me excited that they're, they're going to eventually do this. So I, I really believe there have been conversations through the whole thing that this is what's going to happen and they're going to spin it off and give him a proper thing. And you're right, this may be the end of the Marvel Cinematic Universe and with, with uh, Robert Downey Jr. probably stepping aside, with Chris Evans maybe stepping aside, two characters that can still keep going are Hulk and Thor. Mm -hmm. So if you've got Hemsworth, because Hemsworth has never said he wants to leave, right. and Ruffalo ha is constantly coming back, and, and in the quotes with Kevin Feige, he has these all these ideas for Hulk standalone movies. So those two guys, if you're going to carry, have some kind of anchor into the next uh, phase, they'd be good ones to start with. I'd love to see it. Um, you know what I like seeing right now? CW. It's <laughs> madness. It's DC craziness. 
There's so many characters popping off in CW. You got Black Lightning coming out. We got these main four coming back. Uh, Supergirl season three. Uh, uh, Flash was down a little bit, but you know, uh, Legends of Tomorrow premiere. Uh, to me, I, I, I have to catch up. Like all these dropped. I know Roka, you saw some of them. I, I do have to. Yeah. You, did you see I any of these? I haven't seen the premieres yet. Yeah, so I haven't seen these premieres yet. Roka, what what, what what did you see so far? Let's talk truth for a second. Legends of Tomorrow is fantastic. And I, if for whatever reason, it hits all the right buttons for me, and I love it. I don't take it seriously. The cast is amazing, and they have a lot of fun doing the show. And I think that's what bothers me about these other shows. Mm -hmm. I don't 100% sense that they're having fun doing them. And I think with Legends of Tomorrow, I do. I know the Flash cast loves each other, and they're really cool with each other, and I hope we get them on TV talk uh, in the future, but or maybe even Heroes. But like, I, I sense that they're going too much to the uh, aren't we funny angle, and I want to see something a little more rooted in reality. And with Legends of Tomorrow, it's like Guardians of the Galaxy. It has that vibe. And so it still has some reality stuff going on. And Katie Lotz is an amazing actress playing this part of uh, Laura Lance. And so I'm just thoroughly, I thoroughly enjoyed Legends of Tomorrow. I thought Flash season four was a bit of a uh, kind of premiere. And, and Arrow seems to be picking up where they left off last season, that kind of vibe where they're going back to the original first season, two seasons, where it was a darker Arrow, right. possibly killing people, all that. And Supergirl, I don't know what to say, man. I, I, I wanted to enjoy it. And I didn't enjoy it as much as I was hoping I would enjoy it. And But I think there's still an incredible amount of potential because Melissa Benoist is a fantastic actress, and I think she's great on that show. I just wish the writing would step up to the level of the acting that she can do. I, you know, I, I really like the interpretation of Supergirl and the, mm -hmm. and the more playful, fun yes. kind of feeling that, they, that everyone, throughout all the seasons, I haven't seen this new third season mm -hmm. opener yet, but the first two seasons to me were really fun. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of what I wanted from Supergirl, and I'm glad so many other people uh, watched it long enough to even get to a third season because I feel like that's a good counterpoint to Arrow. Like yeah. you have this dark, kind of grim world that some people really want to be in, and then you have this kind of fun, more brighter superhero y kind of world that some people want to be in. And I think it's Legends of Tomorrow is a great place as well. It's a time travel mm -hmm. series where you can jump all around the DC universe, and they're taking advantage of that. I know they've already Jonah Hex has already been in two. I know they're going <laughs> to Constantine mm -hmm. the, from man, I think his name's Matt Ryan. Yeah, right? from the NBC. Yeah, yeah. he's going to be in this season. So, what do you think accounts for the sort of soft uh, ratings on a couple of these premieres? Is it just people who are going to be watching it later on the app? Is it just that their audience is now trained like a, a bunch of people waiting for Netflix, a bunch of people watching delayed? Like you hit it on the head, Amy. I think it really is uh, as our world changes. I think, you know, Nielsen, who are these people? I mean, a lot of these things, these <laughs> older ways of judging and, you know, ah, nobody watched it. Sorry, <laughs> idiot. Everyone's got a DVR and it's collected for later. Or everyone's like, I'll wait for Netflix, just binge all 38 episodes. It's this mentality that exists now. And so people who are like somehow calculating these ratings need to get on it and figure that out. A lot of people are like, oh, it was a failure. Did nobody watch it? But why is everyone talking about it? Why is it everyone that we know talking about it? Because they're going to watch it at some point. So yeah. it feels like it's on everybody's radar. Maybe they didn't see it when you programmed it at 8 o'clock on a Tuesday. But that's just not how people watch television anymore. That's how I feel about it. I think you nailed it, where people don't watch TV. I like to watch TV when I want to watch it. And that's mm -hmm. the world we live in. I'm never going to watch something when it's on. Well, I think there are a number of factors here. With the Supergirl situation, I think it was because people kind of got turned off by the mon storyline of the second season mm -hmm. and the way the season finale ended. Because the season finale, it was a series high, the second season finale. And to come back on almost a series low for a season three premiere is shocking. And I think it's because people didn't enjoy the mon storyline. But I also think, and this is maybe controversial, and people may hate me for saying this, but we have to deal with reality and that a lot of people are cutting the cord. Cable, cable is too much now. People don't want to pay for it anymore. People are borrowing other people's passwords to watch stuff on their online. People are watching on, on pirated websites. Right. So if there's a way to find a way to quantify this instead of folding your arms and being like, stop doing it, be real. People are not, people are not going to pay that much. The, the, the economy, people aren't making as much. People are going to cut corners within cut corners. And so to me, until we find a way to quantify how people are watching the amount of views an episode is getting through any number of means and i'm sure there is a way we put man on the moon i'm sure we could figure this out <laughs> right you know uh th then uh, until then we won't know for sure what the ratings well, you, Roke, are. you don't like that bring <laughs> <laughs> right. james nielsen guy it yeah. can't just be him <laughs> <laughs> let's and move it, on it okay. is funny because like a cord cutting even hits like cw is yeah, free yeah, yeah. 
But like most, a lot of people out there haven't even figured out how to get the free television into their television. Right. They don't even bother. Like they're just like, I don't know. Right. I'll just watch they're it just, on the app and stream yeah, it to my TV. And stuff. Yeah, yeah. Right. holding the cords. I don't know how to connect these. <laughs> um, you know what's connected is the 30-second Justice League trailers that we've been seeing, which are a lot of fun. I mean, I think they're I introducing a lot more humorous mm -hmm. aspects to the team. Like I said, I think Flash is the big standout. Absolutely love Wonder Woman. What are your thoughts about these newer 30-second trailers? Well, and I haven't been on since the, the full Comic-Con trailer. Oh, That's yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. That's absolutely uh, right. What uh, do you feel? Let's get your quick thoughts on the actual Just League new trailer. So I, I'm I'm crazy excited for this movie. I had heard a lot about the trailer by the time I got to watch it, so I sort of, like, it was less different than I expected, but those yeah. differences were significant. Like, just just sneaking in the shot of Wonder Woman cracking a smile, right. like, that's a statement on behalf of the movie, and it's a statement I'm into. Uh, so I think I'm going to love everything with The Flash. Uh, I'm, I'm really excited to watch this movie. I, I'm, I'm still... I don't exactly know what we're going to get. I like that I don't know the entire plot. I'm excited about that. I'm still watching all these things, and I feel like the movie's still going to have surprises for me, which is very exciting. Um, I'm really looking forward to getting more of a sense of, like, Cyborg's personality, some of the stuff that, like, is hopefully going to emerge within the movie. Uh, but, yeah, bring it on, Justice League. Roga, what do you think about yeah. these 30-second spots? Oh, I love the spots. And I know some people here have seen it, or a couple of people have seen it. I have no friends who've seen it. And whatever with that, I I I'm still looking forward to it, and and I, and I love these spots because they make me feel like they've done the right thing, which is the combination of humor and serious situations. And yes, they all have their personalities, and we see it on the separate spots that they all have those moments, like when uh, Cyborg catches Aquaman, says the ride isn't over yet, and like all of that stuff. I dig it. And some people are pushing back, saying, "Oh, he's such a bro." I dig the bro aspect of Aquaman. It's a new way to do it instead of having some you know, uh, uh, passive aggressive, touchy feely blonde guy complaining about his arm. I talked to fish. I, I, yeah, like I talked to fish. Like I wanted something more. So I like the spots, love it, and I can't wait to see the movie. Yeah, I think uh, making uh, Aquaman Conan the Barbarian, but the real version, <laughs> kind of made sense. And yeah. a lot of people were like, why is he looking? Well, you know, I think that's going to, hopefully it doesn't get too surfery, but we'll see. Yeah. I'm really excited about Just League and, and Thor Ragnarok. Well, that brings our show to a close. Uh, thank you all for watching Heroes this week. I did want to bring up uh, some stuff that, you know, nobody likes to talk about. We keep hearing uh, over the news over the last few weeks a lot of abuse towards women, a lot of abuse of power against women. And this has been going on in our industry since our industry started. And it's something that nobody likes to address, especially white men uh, who have power and who have taken advantage of that power. So I uh, just want to say for everyone here at Heroes, I think everyone who's coming forward, I think you're doing the right thing. Do not be afraid. Know that a lot of white men have your back and think that the people who are abusing you are scumbags. And I just want to go on record to say that. I'd like to see every single person who's taken advantage of anyone see their just rewards come to them, exactly what's coming to them. So I think it's uh, what comes around goes around. So all the people who are coming forward, I'm glad they're coming forward now. It's better now than never. So I just want to throw that out there. Uh, I'd like to thank our guest, John Roca. Where can people find you online? Hey, that's I echo everything John said. Not just white men, all men, I would think. Yes. And and uh, very powerful words, John. Thanks for saying that. Really powerful. You guys can find me at The Roca Says on Twitter and on Instagram. And if you want to listen to me and Steve talk on the Cinephiles about John Carpenter's The Thing, we dropped a new one today uh, on their Cine-Files on iTunes or Android. I, I'm going to be listening to John Roca. <laughs> Thanks. Sweat you. out about The Thing, one of my favorite <laughs> films of all time. Amy Dallin, where can people find you online? Uh, you can find me on Twitter and Instagram at Enthusiamy. Thanks for those words. Uh, be kind. Uh, everyone you watch and admire has been through versions of this. Uh, just, just support. Uh, thanks. Yeah. And you guys have a great weekend. I'll see you all next week. What's up, sweaties? Josh Knapp here. Thanks for watching this episode of Collider Heroes. You want to watch more Collider episodes of Heroes, comic book shopping, and click on any of these links right here to get more of that content. You can subscribe right now and share Collider Heroes, share comic book shopping with your friends. Thanks for watching.